Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Today's show will be all about bulbs, tulips, daffodils, hyacinths, and more. Joining us on Bloomers in the Garden, today's special guest, William Schilder from the Netherland Bulb Company. William has been a friend of Bloomers for close to 30 years. And I asked William to come on to explain and inspire you to plant bulbs in your yard and landscape. Bulbs can make a dynamic change to your home and can be used in the landscape, also in an outdoor containers and also in house plants. It's a, it's magical how these plants, they look like potatoes and you put them in the ground and all of a sudden they become these vibrant, beautiful flowers. So get out your pens and papers and get ready to take notes because we'll be back in the garden with William Schilder of the Netherlands Bulb Company right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide contains bifithrin, which is a highly recommended product to control the spotted lanternfly. Available as both a ready-to-use and a concentrate, they are a water-based, low-odor, non-staining insecticide formulation. Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide may be used indoors or outdoors. It provides up to four months residual control indoors and up to six weeks residual control outdoors. Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide kills a wide variety of insects, including fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, roaches, ants, spiders, earwigs, crickets, and grasshoppers. Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide may be used around the perimeter of the home, on lawns, trees, shrubs, flowers, and even vegetables. So, the next time you visit your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide and expect to have the best-looking plants and landscape in the neighborhood. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, Emmis, Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden, and welcome, William. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, The history of tulips and the Dutch people, to me, is amazing. Where it was at one time where it seemed like it was like the stock market, where bulbs were traded, and could you explain that, or am I putting you on the spot? No, (laughs) that's okay. uh, Yeah, the bulbs are originally coming from Turkey, and they were introduced in the Netherlands in the 1500s, 1600s. Mm-hmm. And wow. uh, the climate of the Netherlands is ideal to grow tulips, for example. It's, uh, the summers are not too hot, and the winters are mild. They're cold, mm-hmm. but uh, they're, they're perfect to grow tulips. Yeah. And that where the value, wasn't it the value of tulips where like one tulip was selling for like an outrageous amount because they were being traded? That's correct. Yeah, the, uh, uh, they went kind of overboard. They, they found uh, a tulip with a virus in there. Mm-hmm. So they call them now the Rembrandt tulips. Yeah. 
and it was actually a, a bad tulip. It okay. didn't produce very well, but a lot of people uh, invested a lot of money in it, well, and well. then it crashed. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> and that I someday I'll get to Holland, but obviously you still have retained your accent. How long <laughs> have you lived in the States? Uh, well, I was 19 when I left uh, Holland wow, wow. after uh, Horticultural yeah. College. Okay. And then I left. Uh, I went for uh, about two years to Canada, British Columbia. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then after nice. that, I moved to Boston and oh, uh, with a car and a sales book. <laughs> I started selling uh, products in the Philadelphia area. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, I we've known each other for most of that time. That's right. Most of that time when we were much younger. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> At least I had more hair then. <laughs> but anyway, that uh, it's, it's amazing that on how I've watched bulbs where, I mean, the old timers used to just religiously plant bulbs and it was tulips, daffodils, hyacinths. I'm talking about spring flowering bulbs. Correct. And that it just was something that was done. The new generation of gardeners, they're almost a little standoffish, that they're a little confused by that. Um, I just find it surprising that how do we get that information in the hands of people to not be intimidated by planting bulbs they, they tried uh, or is trying several things but like fall planting uh, mm-hmm. you know for, uh, for tulips and daffodils in the fall right uh, we find the problem is that you plant in october and then you gotta wait right four five six months mm-hmm. to to get something coming up right and we get a lot or our customers get a lot of questions in the spring where can I buy tulips in May right. or in April when they flower? Right. So it's uh, it, it's very hard to educate people to plant yeah. flowering mm-hmm. bulbs in the fall. We do. You've got there. I've seen programs where it's it's dig and drop. Yep. That's uh, a new marketing campaign. It's how come uh, previous generations got it? Maybe they're more patient. <laughs> I don't know. It, it it frustrates me because tulips, and you know that we plant. 5,000 tulips in front of bloomers, you know, probably every other year. Um, this year, the guys dug them up. Dug them up. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> so, yeah, and I know I have to get my water in. Um, but uh, it's something that where just the earliness of like daffodils and grape hyacinths, snowdrops are all missed out if you're just planting annuals or even most common perennials. Yeah. Spring flowering bulbs are uh, are great, like a, a very good kickoff for spring. Right. You know, you got pansies. Uh, you know, your crocuses come up first. Yeah. Grape hyacinths, daffodils, the tulips. Even you could plant early, mid, and late. Mm-hmm. And then you have six weeks of flowering, and then after your tulips, you can do alliums. Right. You know, you have your fritillarias. You, they call them stink lilies, but why do they call them stink lilies? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you'll you'll know when you work in a warehouse. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll know so where it, they are. It's yeah. not the flower that smells; it's the actual <laughs> it's the bulb. bulb. Yeah, it keeps uh, some of the the rodents away. Oh yeah. gosh, what is it like in Holland? I mean, is are there bulbs everywhere you look in? No, you have it. Uh, I would say along the coast. That's what originally started Sassenheim and Lisse, mm-hmm. and then some of these growers wanted to expand, and then they went to the north of Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, between Den Helder and Alkmaar. And then after that, they started reclaiming land, the flavor polders. Mm-hmm. They started growing bulbs there as well. Okay. So, How about within their landscapes and within, in, is it, do you see all types of, of bulbs or is it? Yeah, you see like, all types of bulbs. It's it mostly tulips. Even if you look at the acreage mm-hmm. being grown of total bulb production, mm-hmm. half of it is tulips. And then 10% is hyacinths. Okay. I would say 25% is garden lilies. Okay. So that gives you an idea. Yeah. I see we're going to talk later on in the show about what's coming on the horizon, but I see such a diversity from the bulb growers where it used to be, like we were saying, daffodils and, and hyacinths and tulips, and now it's I'm seeing things like anthurium. is a yeah. big production of anthurium. Um, as far as Holland itself... Is Holland below sea level? I would say about two thirds. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, and, and that—that's why there's so many canals. And that's correct. Yeah. 
the the engineering and we were actually on the way here we were listening uh, a historical, historical yeah. book about uh, it was they were talking about New York and how New York was bought for twenty three dollars <laughs> you know <laughs> by the Dutch and now pretty it's worth what a pretty good deal but <laughs> yeah. but where yeah. it always has been where the and all right um. I'm Dutch and German, and I'd probably say mostly Dutch, and that where they just engineering and financial, how did a country that's not gigantic manage all of that and be so influential? I mean, bankers too, right? Yeah. A lot of the Dutch are bankers and still are. Well, Holland is uh, economic-wise, it's a big uh, exporter of uh, agriculture products, machinery, chemicals. Mm-hmm. Wow. About half of the exports go to Germany, mm-hmm. you know, and Holland also has a big, wow. uh, you know, harbor, Rotterdam. Right. They import a lot of goods and services that goes through Holland to Germany. And it's amazing. I mean, someday, amazing. someday, I've always said, someday I'm going to get there. Yeah. Someday. Well, you're you're, <laughs> going you're to get too there. busy in April. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We've talked on the show before. It's uh, like people always say, it's like, oh, how beautiful the cherries are in Washington. I'm never getting to see them yeah, ever. No I'm, way. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, someday, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. All right. Well, we've got to take a break. And we're going to be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, McCaddocksburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant paired with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 
1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, William, I've got a simple question for you. (laughs) It'll probably be a challenge, though. What is a bulb? Well, a bulb is like a a storage organ. Um, Everything is in the bulb, like the leaves, the flowers. Hmm. Uh. And after dormancy, it comes up like everything is already in the bulb of a tulip. After August 1st, everything is developed. Sometimes August 15th, if the season is late. Right. But that's when you start the process. That's when you can plant, you know, uh, your first mm-hmm. tulips. If you're in a cold, cold climate, right. like up in uh, northern Canada. But uh, for this area, the best time to plant is October. Okay. October, October 15th. Wow. Yeah. Right, right now. <laughs> yeah. I always wonder if you should wait till after the first frost or just go for it. It's better than not planting at all, I tell people. Yeah. You know, it's because uh, a lot of people uh, buy the bulbs and right. they forget about them. <laughs> it's the same as seeds. That's right. You know, yeah. you'll be amazed how, uh, what the percentage of people don't plant mm-hmm. the seeds. Or, and it's the same with the bulbs. Sure. I planted mine in, uh, in December. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, it was very wow. late. Yeah. We but, planted uh, ours The best last time year. is when you have, a, like, this coming weekend is good. The following week it looks good. It's good too. Yeah. yeah. Say so the best time to plant is when you have to put your coat on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All, right, right. I guess. Uh, All right. It's, it's nice and cold. I remember that. Yeah. Really. That's good. Yep. When like a bulb, like so we we talk about tulip bulbs and that most people are familiar with that looks like. Yeah. But then I was saying in break, like there's something called a pip. Like a pip is like a a small bulb. Yeah, a good, good example is like uh, Lily of the Valley. Yeah. It almost looks like your pinky, and it has some roots underneath, yep. and then the flowering pip, or the pip is on top. Okay. That's what a pip is. All right. Yeah. So it's a, a miniature miniature bulb, kind oh. of? Yeah. Because it actually, and, and then there are other things that are that are more roots, like we were talking about dahlias. Cannas. And cannas. That's a rhizome. Yeah. Now, all right, we're going to really, we ex- Excuse us, please, while we go into like a little more in depth. Yeah. But like caladiums and other things are now being used with tissue culture, right? So there are things where it's not the traditional correct way. Tissue that you culture used- is usually uh, done when you need uh, when, when you have a good, healthy mother plant, mm-hmm. and you want to up the production of that particular plant. Then they use tissue culture. And. Can you explain tissue culture? Tissue culture is uh, when you take the, the growth tip of, of, a, of a young plant mm-hmm. and put it in a lab, like a test tube, like a right. little tube. Like a little, in, a, in a tube or Correct. a Petri dish? Because yeah. I've seen them in yeah. both. And then you transplant it from there. Uh, it gets a little tricky because sometimes you have a mother plant who's not as stable. Mm-hmm. So you end up with a hundred of those test tubes. And then after a while, you line them out in the field mm-hmm. and they don't, don't come through to name. You oh, see no. it a lot in daylilies. Okay, where they, yeah. they revert to something Correct. else. Correct, yeah. Okay. We always talk about the science that is involved with horticulture and that how it sometimes you know, gets reduced to, oh, they're just farmers. There's so much science that goes behind the development of plants. Correct. And all of the different varieties of tulips, for instance, that they've been bred now have they come out with a blue tulip yet? There's every color but blue, right? Yeah, that's a tough color. It's the same like uh, the black tulip. You know, you got queen in the night. It's yeah. not black, black. It's a dark, dark purple. Oh, it, lo- it looks yeah. blacker than blue. That's for that's sure. That's correct, yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, but they have to be bred. So will you how? We actually had Vincent. We're, we're going to address this next week. Vincent, uh, Where's Vincent live? He's in North Jersey, North right? Jersey, yeah. yeah he's yeah. in Bergen County. Mm-hmm. He's in Bergen County in Paramus. Where Vincent said, you know, what is a hybrid or, right. you know, what, explain that. And that when you take a tulip, or do you start out saying, this is my goal, I want to have a yellow and red striped tulip? Is that how it would start? Yeah, you have uh, tulip hybridizers and they got their own little plot in the fields. Mm-hmm. They, they pollinate. Mm-hmm. But to start from 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 nothing to like a production, it takes seven years. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. To, to, so you have you might have a few plants, mm-hmm. but to really get production up and being introduced into the market, it's mm-hmm. going to take 
quite a bit of time. I I recently was, you have some growing facilities that are down near Vineland, right? Correct, yeah. I was amazed a few years ago when I went there and I saw the field of Ito peonies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, lot. I have never seen that many Ito peonies. Wow. I didn't even know that many existed. Yeah. And also I was surprised that, that you guys were growing them. Ito peonies has the best story because we've told it before where, you know, Dr. Ito, and, and correct me if I have this story oh, wrong, right. where he was crossing a garden peonies with tree peonies because he wanted the different colors and he wanted to have that nice plant that it wasn't, you know, a leggy thing. Like I have a tree peonies in front of my house that is just like, I wish I could shear it, but I don't want to because <laughs> it's a, such a nice size <laughs> because right. it just gets, it gets leggy and out of control. Mm -hmm. But what he did is kept crossing and kept crossing and trying to make them work, and he died before he ever got to see them flower, right? That's correct, yeah. I can't yeah. Ima imagine the patience. I have no patience. <laughs> I, c I couldn't imagine, <laughs> like, doing that. I guess it's everything with bulbs requires yeah. patience. You it have does. to be patient when you, you plant wait. them in the ground. <laughs> That's right. And, and like you said before, we get it all the time. Like, when our tulips are flowering out in front of bloomers, people are coming in. They want to buy the finished product. That's right, correct. In spring, which is, we do plant some, but they're outrageously expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, what, maybe 50 cents for a tulip bulb? So anywhere between 50 yeah, cents? Yeah, around there, 50. Depending 60, on the variety? Depending mm -hmm. on the variety, right. yeah. To do that compared to getting, you know, five, five bulbs that are flowering for $10, right. you know, it just... Yeah. Everybody gets some bulbs. We're going to talk about planting in the landscape. Uh, got a question. Yeah, I had a question for you, uh, William. What is, a, what is a hybrid Darwin tulip? I see that a lot on, on uh, I've read that about that. Yeah, what is the, what, why Darwin? Yeah, why Darwin? That's a good question I cannot answer. <laughs> that's, that's all right. right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. That's well, all right. in the tulip range, you have early, single early, they call it double early. Uh -huh. Then right. you go to your triumph tulips that have a more color range, and then you have your Darwin. Darwin is your typical standard. Tool. Okay. Oh, standard. That's what you okay. see, those big fields. Right. Yep. That's what like, they are? Like your pink impression, red impression. Mm -hmm. Now, if you need a good, basic, solid red tulip, yep. go to the, the Darwins. There you yeah. go. All right. So go to Darwin tulips because there's also like Appledorn. Mm -hmm. Appledorn is one. you got three or four reds uh, are available. Okay. They're all red Darwin tulips. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, and, and it's... I want everybody to, to really pay attention to, to planting bulbs this year just oh, yeah. because it is so rewarding because nobody's got them. No. And like your neighbors <laughs> will look and say, how, what is that? What when did you that? plant that? How, yeah. that's amazing. That you is, know, yeah. can I get them? And they can't <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> because they've right. got to be done, that's right. you know, three months earlier or longer. Yep. So just uh, remember, go to your local garden center and pick up some bulbs. We're going to be back right after these message and we're going to talk about what do you do with spring bulbs another after wow. they're done blooming there's another confusing one <laughs> all right we'll be right back right after this Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685 one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five. 1880, and we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's broad spectrum insecticide contains bifithrin, which is a highly recommended product to control the spotted lanternfly. Available as both a ready to use and a concentrate, they are a water based, low odor, non staining insecticide formulation. Fertilome's broad spectrum insecticide may be used indoors or outdoors. It provides up to four months residual control indoors and up to six weeks residual control outdoors. Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide kills a wide variety of insects, including fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, roaches, ants, spiders, earwigs, crickets, and grasshoppers. Fertilome's broad-spectrum insecticide may be used around the perimeter of the home, on lawns, trees, shrubs, flowers, and even vegetables. 
So, the next time you visit your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's Broad Spectrum Insecticide and expect to have the best looking plants and landscape in the neighborhood. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Del Cab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Back to Bloomers in the Garden. Okay. Spring flowering bulbs planted in the fall. Summer flowering bulbs planted in the spring. Correct. (laughs) Everybody out there got that? All right. All so right. spring flowering <laughs> bulbs get planted in the fall, uh-huh. and summer flowering bulbs get planted in the spring. Got it. Now, it's coming towards the end of the, the gardening season. Let's start off with the, the summer flowering bulbs, like dahlias, which actually dahlias look pretty good right now. Very good. And and it, they may look the best that they have that's right now. So, But... Dahlias are going to have to be pulled out of the ground. Gladiolas are going to have to be pulled out of the ground. Caladiums, maybe. Caladiums is a tough one because ninety-five uh, percent of the production is done in uh, Florida, okay, and the Apopka area. Yep, and it's high humidity, uh, monkey soil, uh, and to dig the caladiums up, uh, it's going to be hard. So, so homeowners should just treat them as an annual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then. There's, what else have we got that's not hardy? Cannas are, oh, I get the question all the time. Do I dig up my cannas? And I'm always afraid to say because some people, because as soon as you say, yeah, you need to dig them up, they say, oh, mine come back every year. And it's like. <laughs> I've seen I've seen cannas and callas come back, but then they're uh, close to the house. Right. Uh, look like their own, got their own little climate uh, mm-hmm. uh, mulched mm-hmm. in heavily. Right. right. Then they might come back. Okay. Uh, but if you're not sure, dig them up uh, after the first frost. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing. It's like, when do you cut back the foliage? You wait till, like, for instance, dahlias are beautiful now because the humidity is perfect, the sunlight's perfect, it's cooler, so they're not getting burned up. How should somebody, you know, cut them back before they dig them up, right? Yeah. And they should wait till they get hurt, uh, hit by that first frost? Yeah, and then you clean them up and then you dig them up. Okay. So, so you, l- cut, you cut them uh, just at, uh, at the soil level. Okay. You clean up the foliage. And so... You let your summer flowering bulbs that are not hardy, okay, you let them get hit by the frost. Correct. And then that's when you got to think about storing them for winter. Correct. What is the best way? Let's go Let's go through the most popular. We started with dahlias. So frost happens, cut back my dahlias. Now what do I do? 
Well, you shake the soil off a little bit, otherwise you get too much of a big of a clump. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, you can store them in uh, in uh, in black crates. Okay. With a little bit of dry peat moss. All right. They, and those then are, keep them in the garage. They almost look like a milk crate with almost a little more grating in it. Correct. What if I don't have that? Can I put them like in a burlap bag or? You could do a burlap bag, yeah. Yeah. But they, you don't want to have them uh, stored too wet, too moist. Okay. Otherwise, they'll all rot. How, what temperature do they, how low can they go? Because people are always asking, can I put them in my garage? It's like, uh, dahlias will not uh, do very well once it gets below 32. Okay. And, uh, they have to, you have to keep them above 32, preferably below 45. Basement? I mean, it's dry. Basement is fine. Yeah, Co yeah. Cooler, cooler part of the house where it doesn't freeze. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Gladiolus. Gladiolus look like a true bulb. Where yeah. it it has that uh, excuse my ignorance, but that potato look where you know you're putting that <laughs> into the ground, and mm -hmm. when you pop those up, they're going to have roots on them, right? Yeah. So what do you do? You dig them up in uh, after the first frost again. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen too many people being uh, very successful with digging up uh, gladiolus. All right, yeah. because they're plants, not puppies. All right. Anyway, again, there's some plants just start next year. Right. Start next year. I, right. I actually did some gladiolas in a planter for a friend where I made a combo pot for them, and I planted gladiolas in there, and that they were a nice surprise spike later yeah. in the year. So yeah. Yeah. Good, you don't have to worry about pulling those out. Um, the next thing is going to be cannas. If, if you've had cannas successfully come back, you say just leave them or dig them up? I would just leave them. Leave them? Yeah. What about those folks that are that don't know? What do they do with cannas? Like, for instance, we have this. It's a newer variety, and it's uh, got that. It's a green leaf with a, a heavy striping of yellow through it, the golden yellow. Yeah. It's stunning. I don't want to lose that plant. So if I dig that up, I've got to do the same thing. Get the soil off, Correct. Yep. and I'm going to cut it. At, this is after the first frost because cannas have those big leaves. They can actually take it a little harder than some of the other uh, more delicate leaves. If they are in the garden, then you dig them up. But if they're in patio pots, mm -hmm. uh, some people let them dry out a little bit, right. cut them back to about uh, three, four inches above the pot, Okay, and then put them in the, in the garage. In the garage? Now, if it's an unheated garage and it gets to be say it's going to get cold but they'll take it better than like the dahlias they do would. take it better but you can uh, put burlap on it and pack them in a little bit okay mm -hmm. yeah okay all right all right good good, good. advice cuz cuz often we get that question all the time uh, yeah. all the time yep. um and that uh it's, yeah <laughs> it right. almost depends on where you're from yeah. they're like i guess like for our listeners that are up in north jersey new york that area, they really have to take care of their cannas. There, we're yeah. down where we're reaching down in Delaware. They probably could get away with them in the ground. Yeah, so. along the New Jersey shore, south of uh, yeah. Freehold. You know, it's a different climate. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, and that uh, to be really sure, you want to go ahead and and dig them up. And the good thing about about that is, if you have them in pots, and that they can be stole, stored cold, not necessarily have to put them in the, uh, a uh, basement or someplace, yeah, nice. but on all bulbs, you want to store them dry. You don't want to try to water them or no, anything else. No, not too wet. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll rot out. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's good. That's good. Yeah. The best way to be sure that you have really good bulbs the next year is buy new ones. <laughs> Just <laughs> start right. all over. That's right. for business. And it's good for business too. The Dutch are very good with money. Now tulips don't don't last. Uh, what, over the one year or two years? How, how does that work? Well, some people leave them in the ground for two years. Oh, yeah? Uh, but the second year, you get uneven. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can do single late flowering tulips. Uh, they, they're they pretty tall. Mm -hmm. If you want to cut them, then you leave a little bit of foliage behind okay. and let that grow for the following year. Then you have mm -hmm. success as well. Because the bulbs divide, right? What happens yeah. is, is that they'll divide and then they'll be... I think they're called bulblets. Correct. And that they just are, end up being leaves 
certainly the third year. I know Correct. that we've, we've tried to nurse those 5,000 tulips to get them. Maybe we can get one more year out of it. It never works. It, works. <laughs> it yeah, never works. Best, uh, most, most people, uh, especially in the commercial landscape, they treat it as a one-year crop. One year. Yep. 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 That's, I mean, if you plant bulbs every year, your success is going to be so much greater than if you're trying to dig them out of the ground. Yeah. But often, you know, Gardeners are, are tough where they want to have that whole challenge of, of digging things out and, and storing like the, the summer flowering bulbs. And well, you can, uh, I mean, you could plant grape hyacinths, uh, alliums, yeah. mm-hmm. daffodils, yeah. uh, wood mm-hmm. hyacinths. They all, you can leave those in the ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We've got another break coming up. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. On today's show, we've been talking with uh, William Schindler of the Netherland Bulb Company, and uh, now is the time to plant spring flowering bulbs. And how does someone design uh, spring bulbs in their landscape, uh, William? Well, I would uh, I would look at the space first. Uh, you're established uh, what you already have, and there is always room for bulbs. I mean, if you look at tulips, mm-hmm. it's six yeah. per square foot. Daffodils okay. is six. Grape hyacinths is about twelve to fifteen. So there's always a, a small area where you can plant bulbs. Nice, mm. very good. You know, what if you have annuals planted? It's almost time for the annuals to be done. Do you just rip those annuals out? And then can you, can you like at Bloomers, we'll plant on top of our tulip bulbs with annuals. Is, are we doing something wrong or is that okay? Well, I kind of like pansies and tulips together. Yeah. Uh, We see in the commercial landscape, we see an uptick in planting of bulbs when it's mom season. Mm -hmm. And then it slows down a little bit. And then when the, the moms need to come out. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like the end of November, 
Yep. Mm-hmm. That's or the beginning of, you know, the middle of November mm-hmm. when the mums are done. Okay. Then it's a good time to plant too, wow. the same spot. Yeah. I've, I've always wanted to do a pink, do a pink tulip and an early tulip, so probably March, April, and then with the underplanting of like a sky blue pansy. Ooh, nice. Pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Some right. people do uh, daylilies and daffodils. Uh-huh. Okay. So you have, for example, daylily Stella de Oro. Yeah. And then behind or in front, you do the daffodils. Okay. So when the daffodils are done, then the daylilies come in bloom. And the daylilies will somewhat hide the foliage as they right. they come out. Yeah. And then you're looking at alliums. Alliums, yeah. with the big now, stalks. Now, now alliums and an ornamental onion. Correct. Right? right. Uh, we have the, is it millennial or millennium? Millennium. millennium. Yeah, that's more as a, as a perennial. It's not a right. bulb. That's oh, not yeah. a bulb. It's not a bulb. Okay. How about the gladiator? Gladiator is a bulb or okay. globe master. Okay. That's globe actually master. a true bulb. Yeah. And they're four to six feet tall, right? Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. They are awesome. <laughs> yeah. And Julio, they're about the size of your head. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they're uh, deer resistant. Deer resistant. Oh, deer. yeah. You know, wow. you just brought up a good point. Correct. Daffodils deer resistant? Yeah, yeah. hyacinths. 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 Okay. Alliums. Alliums. Tulips? Yeah. No. 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 Tulips, they're no, but uh, okay. So uh, I just want to say something. They have a, tr- a true blue allium Did, on your website. I just saw it. True, true blue. blue. Yeah, it's called uh, Azur- Azurium, if I could say that, at the botanical name. Yeah. And it's, a pur- it's purplish blue. It's what? Yeah. Purplish blue. Purplish blue? Yeah, it's oh. hard to get blue, blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. We, Everyone, I apologized for the horticulture industry because a lot of times our blues are more lavender or they're more pink or like. <laughs> right. All I have to say is blue hydrangea, pink hydrangea. Right. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, where it, it's, there are so many different textures that you can get with planting bulbs. And that uh, where just the best thing I just heard you say is planting daffodils in front of your daylilies. Because it's frustrating because when you get done, you have to wait for them. Like, do you cut back daffodils after they're done blooming? <laughs> Preferably not. You want to leave the green on for the growth for the following year. Okay. Uh, they have this huge uh, daffodil festival in uh, in New England. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I drove through town there and that what's up with all that foliage. And the township decided to to leave the foliage be and just plant annuals after the foliage has died. So, you know, as a homeowner or as a person driving through town, you look at all that foliage. Yeah. But you just have to be patient, and mm-hmm. when it dies off, then you plant your annuals. Can, can you mix Can you mix the bulbs up, like, more naturalistic? Yeah, good uh, daffodil would be a naturalizing mix. It's a good mix. Okay. okay. Uh, wood hyacinths. Grape hyacinths. Now, everybody listening, you must be wondering, where do I get all these bulbs from? Uh, you have a website, and it has a dealer locator on it, right? Correct. Yeah, it's uh, netherlandbulb.com, and you go to the bottom of the page, mm-hmm. and it says retail locator. You click on it, put your zip code in, okay, and then it gives you the garden centers within a 25 or 10 or 5-mile radius. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. So if you're looking for bulbs, just go on to on that website and go to the dealer locator and, and let them know that you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden. We'd appreciate that. All right, Julio. If you're planting tulips, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Would you plant a mass planting or would you just plant a few plants or a few bulbs? I like a lot of them. You like a lot yeah. of them? Yeah. All right, because you're redoing your landscape. We've yeah, yeah. talked about that. Are you going to yeah. put in any bulbs? Yes. Yes? I love bulbs. I, they come in early. I mean, you know, you have nothing between, you know, June, you know, from May, June, you know, June, July, and August. Yeah. So, you know, these are early. I like the early ones. Yeah. yeah. You know, they come in, you know, tulips. The, uh, I like it when you plant at least 25 or 50 yeah. okay. together. Oh, yeah. And you and get bags tie, with that together, 25 or 50. And yeah. if you want to cut some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and put them in the put, vase. Turn the you still yeah, have a nice yeah. show. Yeah, look at that. You like that. I do like that. Yeah. I do like that, bringing it inside the house. Right. I can, like we were talking about old school. I can remember where I was told, and I don't know if it was a professor from school, that where you take crocus 
and you go out in the middle of your lawn, yep. and you throw them up in the air, <laughs> and you plant them wherever they land. Right. <laughs> and because crocus come up before you have to cut the grass, Correct. you'll get these pretty flowers dotted all through your lawn. Wow. And then yeah. you cut the grass, and they go back down, and they come back next year, right? Yeah, you take a, you take a, a shovel, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then you, you push it into the ground, you know, back and forth, mm-hmm. and then it makes a little uh, hole. And then you drop the crocuses in there. Nice. Julio, like put it. a big Z for big your Z. Z yeah. for, for Zamora. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> that's Julio's that. house. We could tell, that's like right. Zorro. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, that's something yeah. that is missing. I mean, you don't see you don't see that as much anymore. Yeah. People are trying to, but and how about you, then you? But you have people putting on weed controls and other things. Does it, is it affected? Yeah. Ah, tough questions. Tough oh, question. That's number two question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the second, uh, All tough right, we'll question. move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm out. But evidently, I mean, there's worse um, uh, herb- herbicides before yeah, sure. compared to now. I mean, so all I can say is try it. Try it. Try because it out, even yeah. if it's just for one, I mean, a bag of bulbs are cheap. They are. They're you know, cheap. my goodness. Price hasn't changed much. No, in, no. In the last 20 years. You know. <laughs> the, wow. The, and, and that's exactly right. For the price of a Happy Meal, you can go out and plant a lot of bulbs. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> you know? That's right. So. Oh, wow. All right. We're up against the break again. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 685 1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t shirt. Call or text us at 609 685 1880. That's 609 685 1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Back to Bloomers in the Garden. William, I want to talk about Netherland Bulb and what's on the horizon. Now, it really surprised me. A couple years ago, you went into producing water garden plants. Correct. That was a departure from bulbs for sure. What else is new? What's different? What are things that I don't know about that you're doing and certainly our listeners wouldn't know? Well, we do uh, hens and chicks and uh, sedums in uh, four-inch pots. Okay. 
besides the water gardening, we do, of course, the floaters, the water hyacinths, okay. the water lettuce. Okay. And then outside of the greenhouses, we do the Ito peonies. That's, and again, that amazed me when I saw them. Yeah. I, it has been a favorite of mine since I first saw them. Um, that you're doing production, and I know our independent garden centers might not want to hear this, but you're doing production and putting them in some chains, right? Correct. And that uh, the plants look a little too nice. All right, could you cut that out? I mean, you know, we're hoping they get junky plants, but uh, I know that you have a standard. And well, we <laughs> offer them to garden center as well. Yeah, and uh, more selection, mm-hmm. uh, bigger pot, and more right. flowers per pot. So that's the difference. Okay, and yeah. I mean, it's it is the again if you if if you want a beautiful plant, an Ito peonies is something that you should invest in. They aren't cheap, I'm going to tell you right now. My daughter lives in Philadelphia, well, for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, right. yes, marriage, house, marriage you know house. how that goes. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so she is in the Northern Liberty section, and I helped her with her landscape, and I put an Ito peony out front, and people would stop and take pictures of her landscape, and she just has like a little <laughs> row home type thing, and it's, and it's – it's just stunning. Yeah. It just. Stunning. I planted uh, a two-gallon Ito peony at uh, my other house mm-hmm. uh, before I moved to the Red Bank area, and the first year it had about four flowers, the Barcella, which right. is the yellow one. Yep. And then three years later, I counted about fifty flowers. Wow! And there's the so, flowers are gigantic. Oh, they're they're big. I, I'm holding up my hands like. Bigger than a softball. Correct. It's like my head. Like your head, Julio. <laughs> <laughs> Either you have a small head or a big head. I'm not sure. But I tell you what, it's, it, to me, it, because of the colors where there's like a mauve color and there's uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. What is yep. that? That's a, a salmon. Yeah, and, sure. and just odd colors. Like you always think about peonies, then they're either red, pink, or white. And these, and it's that same type of compact plant that it has those beautiful well, if I'm saying compact, it's four feet tall. Yeah. Well, with the regular peonies, you need to stake them. Yeah. And after yeah. the heavy rain, yeah. they lay flat with the stakes stake on them. That's right. And with uh, the Ito peonies, they kind of cascade. Mm-hmm. So they don't fall flat over. Right. You know, they right. kind of stay up. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh, they're, yeah. they're a great plant. A great plant. Anything else? Like, so you're growing in, like, the whole... I always get conf- not confused, but I think my customers are confused about the whole succulent movement. And then, like, you have plants that look like succulents, like sedum and like hens and chicks, which I guess they technically are a succulent. That are you do you're you're not doing anything with house plants yet? No, we're not. No. Can no. you grow bulbs as a house plant? Can you grow them in the house? Well, a good example will be paper whites. Okay. And uh, amaryllis. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you see them uh, pretty soon in the store, like in a, a couple of weeks. Right. So that's that will be perfect as a house plant. Okay. And that yeah. we always get them in those boxes that are ready boxes. to go, or we have loose paper whites. Yeah. Um, paper whites are real fragrant, right? Some people call it fragrant. And <laughs> some people uh, have another opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Your grandmother's perfume? Yeah. 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 But it, it's it, there's but there's still you can. And and a, and a, here's a big word, horticultural word, vernalization. Correct. Ooh. Do all tulips need vernalization? Because I noticed that some of your packages of tulips, and I hope this is correct, that they either still do or they used to say ideal for indoor growing or forcing. Do they still have that on there? Because that way you could tell whether they needed. No, the, every tulip needs to be vernalized, which means they need a 12 to 16 week cold, cold period which means 45 or lower. Th- can you throw it in your uh, freezer? <laughs> Not in your freezer. <laughs> Nothing in the freezer. Yeah, no. <laughs> so in you the can put it next to your lettuce if you want. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so you can put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, what you could do is, uh, for example, you have a six-inch pot. You uh-huh. put six tulips in there. Right. And then you take the whole pot. You can bury them in the ground, like give a mulch. Right. Mulch on top of the pot. Okay. And then uh, you make sure you put a stake in there so when it snows, you know where it is. <laughs> okay. And uh, then after 12 to 14 weeks, you take the pot out, 
let it uh, acclimate in the garage for like a week. Okay. And then take the whole pot and put it in the in the house. Okay. Oh, and wow. then it takes about three weeks to get them in flower. So amaryllis doesn't need vernalization. No, no. Paper whites don't need it. No. Are there any other uh, tool or I'm sorry, bulbs that that you could? You could do a hyacinth. You could do daffodils. So hyacinths don't need. No, hyacinths need to vernalization. Okay. They need to have a cold treatment. Okay. Yeah. And and that's something where a lot of the plants that we sell need that process. Like you wonder about how you know what brings things into flower and right. and that. How come my plant doesn't rebloom? A lot of times, it's the whole vernalization process that it needs. So it needs that cold to snap it back into growing. So, all right, I'm getting the nod from Brett. <laughs> Am I going over, Brett? Well, thank you for keeping us in line. That's right. All right, we're going to be back in the garden right after this. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way, that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, Julio, school oh, for sure. Yes. William, thank you so much for coming on. If mm-hmm, there is one thing, first of all, I, I want you to tell everybody, what's that website and dealer locator again? Netherlandbulb.com. Netherlandbulb.com, and there's a dealer locator on there. Go to your local garden center and plant bulbs. Yes, go out there and do that now. That's right. The next time you visit your favorite garden center, greenhouse, or nursery, tell them you listen to Bloomers in the, in the Garden. Brett, thank you again. Great job. We'll see you next week right here. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.